G'day YouTube, Warbles on a lot here. With an episode in life through the sea backroscope. Does anybody remember back in August last year, 2013, leading up to the Australian federal election, when I suggested that it'd be a really, really bad idea if Australia was to vote to do nothing about global warming? And I suggested that it would be a really clever idea if everybody voted green. I do believe I posted some movies and uh, one of the titles was even as strong as to say, vote green or die. Okay. And all of a sudden, we immediately got some stinking hot weather and some bushfires and things started to go wrong all over the place in Australia. And the drought started to bite really, really, really hard. And when I said, well, look, you know, like it all went to shit when Tony Abbott was elected, a lot of people said, oh, don't be so stupid. How can you say that it, you know, it all hinges on electing a Liberal national government? Well, it seems to be because the Liberal national government is planning on enacting policies that make global warming worse. And it's also planning on enacting policies that are designed to destroy the fabric of Australian society, which used to be a pretty egalitarian, happy-go-lucky, well-intentioned, fair-go sort of a place. But anyway, since 93% of Australians voted against doing anything serious about global warming, because 93% voted against the Greens. They voted for somebody else. They voted for the Liberal Party, the National Party, or the Labor Party, or some of the Fruit Loop fringe dwellers. But the Greens were the only people who said, we must take serious, strong action to slow down global warming, cut carbon emissions, change the nature of our economy. Instead of that, Australia has a Prime Minister who says that the evidence for global warming is, to say the least, contentious, and climate science is absolute crap. And he's banned what he calls ridiculous research. He's abolished the Minister for Science. He's shut down 650 jobs at the CSIRO, trying to shut down the Climate Change Advisory Commission, closed down the Green Energy Finance Corporation, and he's now announced a review by a global warming denialist into the renewable energy target. So, <clears throat> okay, that's his official position. As soon as he was elected, the rain got shut off to all of the farmers, and now Barney Baby Joyce is running around trying to set things up so that people who have less than two and a half million dollars worth of farm assets, excluding their house, so that means tractors and land, they should be allowed to stay on the dole for three years and get a low interest loan to pay the interest on the money they owe the bank. And uh, that's about the best that Barney Baby Joyce can screw out of his Liberal colleagues in Canberra. And they're going to spend $385 million on looking as if they're bailing out some of the poorer farmers, um, but they won't spend $25 million to help the Alcoa fruit canners, and they won't help Toyota or... Ford or Holden or any of the vehicle manufacturers to stay in business and uh, they're having a hard time deciding what to do about Qantas because nothing's making money in Australia. However, what's the scientific evidence that I point to to say that it all hinges on Australia electing Tony Abbott? Well, I would point to New Scientist magazine. Here with the 15th of February issue. We're in at... On page 11, we find it says the following. In bright red it says, A threshold was crossed in September 2013, so there is a 76% chance of an El Nino this year. The article begins, El Nino may make 2014 the hottest year yet. Really? Next year's going to be the hottest year yet? Last year was the hottest year on record. The year before was the hottest year on record. The year before that was the hottest year on record. And the year before was as well, I think. Last year, Australia had the hottest day, the hottest week, the hottest month, the hottest three consecutive months, and the hottest year on record. And that was during 
a La Nina year. And La Nina is when we get cool weather in summer and lots of rain. So let's see what this article says. Hold on to your ice lollies. Long term weather forecast suggests 2014 will be the hottest year on record because climate bad boy El Nino seems to be preparing to spew heat into the air. An El Nino occurs when warm water deep in the Pacific rises to the surface. It brings rain to South America and drought and fires to Indonesia and Australia. It is part of a cycle called the El Nino Southern Oscillation. It is hard to tell before spring if an El Nino will happen in a given year. Quote, the El Nino Southern Oscillation Cycle more or less reboots around April, May, June each year, says Scott Power of the Bureau of Meteorology in Melbourne, Australia. Now a model aims to predict El Nino by examining a previously unexplored feature of Pacific weather. Armin Bund of Justice Liebig University in Geisen, Germany. They must still have a Ministry of Science in Germany. We don't have one here in Australia, not since the budgie smuggler got in. We don't need to have a Department of a Ministry of Science. They might do ridiculous research, like trying to find causes for global warming and mechanisms to try and prevent it. They need to prevent it when the Prime Minister believes it's all bullshit, eh? Armin Bund of Justice Lieberg University in Geisen, Germany, and his colleagues looked at the link between air temperature over the equator and in the rest of the Pacific. Records showed that, in the year before each El Nino, the two regions became more closely linked, so their temperatures became more similar than at other times. Bund found that if these links reached a critical strength, around 75% of the time, an El Nino formed within a year. Bracket PNAS, comma, doi.org, slash RDN, close bracket, digital object identification code. Quote, there is certainly a correlation between the cooperative mode in the atmosphere that we measure and the onset of an El Nino event, he says. Nobody knows why. That's what it says in the magazine. Now Bund says the threshold was crossed in September 2013, so there is a 76% chance of an El Nino this year. Same DOI code. Thanks to the climate change, 2014 is likely to be one of the hottest year on record. And El Nino would make it even hotter. Maybe the hottest ever, says Wenju Kai of the CSIRO, Australia's National Research Agency in Melbourne. What there is left of it. Tony Abbott got rid of 650 jobs in the CSIRO. But since El Nino normally straddles two calendar years, it might give 2015 that title. Well, my prediction is that 2014 will be hotter than 2013, which was a record year, and 2015 will probably be hotter still. And I don't see anything much that anybody can do about it, except vote green, and perhaps go and learn how to rain dance. That may sound like a silly idea, but on the other hand, I have different fingers. And in the fingers of that hand I present the soil moisture profile gauge, which did actually get as high as 2.75 inches, but I had 85 millimetres of rain as measured by the properly calibrated gauge, which has nothing to overtop it and fiddle with its rain, whereas sadly this always registers slightly less rain because a lot of the stuff coming in vertically from three directions is being diverted. But anyway, yeah, here in Rain Dancing Greenyville, 85 millimetres, that's, uh, believe it or not, 850 tonnes per hectare. At $150 a tonne for a fixed wing aeroplane or $450 a tonne for a helicopter to throw it out and I've got 40 hectares. Yeah, uh, somewhere between three and a half and twelve million dollars worth of rain. And that's on my place here, right? 
Now if I come out here, you'll see that the watershed is about there, right? A couple of kilometres away. If I come down here and show you the town, and we go out west of the town, roughly underneath my bedside light is the Matheson Valley. And over there in the Matheson Valley, some friends of mine, they wouldn't be 25 kilometres away straight line distance to the southwest. Talking to Mrs. Lady Cattle Baron, old kindergarten friend of mine in the supermarket on Friday, she says they got a grand total of 18 millimetres over the five days, and I got 85. So, I don't know whether it's my rain dance or my location or my tree cover or whether it's because I'm a greenie and I'm paying rates and I'm not trying to force the land to produce a commercial profit but yeah I got a bit over four times more rain than my friends did 20 kilometres that away it's all very patchy and the microclimatology effects do seem to be tailored to what you're trying to do on your land at least that's my impression Sorry about that all you Liberal National Labor voters. Don't say you weren't told because I said all this in August. I told you it was going to happen. As it were foretold within the prophecy. Tony Abbott's given us an El Nino drought. Orbels on a lot to YouTube. Ciao.